I welcome everyone to this hearing. I'm grateful to our esteemed panelists for joining us today. The climate crisis and misguided forestry policies have given rise to catastrophic burning across our western forests, including in my home state of California. For decades, the Forest Service's strategy for managing fires was to suppress all fires. In 1935, the Forest Service established the so-called 10 a.m. policy, meaning they would put out every fire by 10 a.m. the next day. However, fire is a natural part of the landscape in western forests. Some trees in these forests even need to be exposed to fire to grow and reproduce. In recent decades, fortunately, the Forest, Forest Service policy has changed. Because the landscape was deprived of fire for decades, however, dense vegetation has accumulated. That means when there are wildfires, they burn hotter and create more damage, feeding off the dry brush. Climate change is also worsening wildfires. Last month, the United Nations called for urgent action in a new report warning that if we continue with business as usual climate pollution, we will have 57 percent more wildfires by the end of this century. Drier conditions make it easier for wildfires to spread and increase their intensity. Droughts leave trees with less water to fight off disease and pests. Dead and di drying tree dying trees are less fire resistant. Climate change combined with the fuel buildup cause extreme wildfire fire disasters that can be deadly. The top five years with the largest amount of wildfire acreage burned since 1960 were 2006, 2007, 2015, 2017, and 2020. From 2000 to 2018, wildfires burned more than twice as much land per area than those in the 1980s. Without objection, I submit the United Nations Environment Program report titled Spreading Like Wildfire, the Rising Threat of Extraordinary Landscape Fires into the Record. We're not immune to this problem in my district in Silicon Valley. In 2020, Santa Clara University and uh, complex blanketed my district with f smoke and unhealthy levels uh, of uh, smoke for weeks. Land managers like the Forest Service had a hard job in addressing this crisis. They must balance, first and foremost, human safety from wildfires, but also the economy, healthy ecosystems, and meeting climate goals. Unfortunately, special interests seek to present industrial management of forests as a solution to out-of-control wildfires. According to public disclosures, industry interests in forestry uh, management spent over $12 million to influence Congress. Not only do they spend to influence con politicians, they work hard to influence the public as well. They spend millions of dollars annually on advertising, defending states, many states' weak forestry laws. Special interests are influencing the policy process to acquire more contracts, saying that we can thin and log our way to fires that will be easier to suppress and control. However, this is not the full truth. While some management, including removing brush and small trees, is crucial to returning forests to a healthy state, industry is too often incentivized to remove the largest trees to sell for building materials and other forestry products. Clear cutting or removing large trees puts communities at greater risks. Our forests evolved alongside fire and older, larger trees are often the most fire resistant. Depending on local circumstances, thinning forests can also increase fire risks if not done cautiously in a science-based manner. Some thinning is necessary according to the science, but it has to be done cautiously and in accordance with the principles. Too much thinning and forests can dry out from exposure to wind and sun and create conditions for high winds. In fact, ProPublica found that public lands that were clear cut in the last five years have burned hotter than federal land that cut fewer trees. We cannot allow short-term financial gains to substitute for collaborative, careful forest management based on the science. Another reason it's important to prioritize fire prevention is to help our wildland firefighters who risk their lives and health each year to protect communities and still aren't paid enough and don't have year-long health care benefits. Wildland firefighters are grappling with longer fire seasons and longer burning fires, which means more overtime and exposure to deadly smoke. Congress must conduct careful oversight to make sure that the U.S. Forest Service has the tools they need to reduce large fires and the resources to pay our firefighters. 
We don't want to make the situation worse by removing the big trees that store the most carbon and slow wildfires down. We want to have a science-based approach to forest management. We need to listen to the science and pursue a community-driven process that incorporates all perspectives to forge the best way forward for our forests. I now recognize our esteemed ranking member, Norman, for an opening statement.